Happy New Year, everybody. My name is Arielle Campbell, and I am a licensed counselor in the Lafayette area and co-owner of Lotus Counseling and Recovery. I'm so excited to be doing this series with you guys and being able to achieve long lasting habits. So stay tuned. Each video is gonna have a little snippet and what you need to practically move forward in creating a new you in this new year. All right, you guys, today's the day. We are gonna be diving into the second part of our series and how to achieve healthy lasting habits in the new year. If you remember in our previous video, we talked about the three aspects being, being able to set a goal, being able to create a system, which is the habits, as well as the identity in the internal narrative going on and why we are creating this goal. So today we're gonna to be completely just talking about the, the narrative and identity. So I'm gonna use my own personal experiences as well as my new year goal and why uh, I'm choosing this new year goal for me. So if you remember, I talked about a big goal for mine in the new year is being able to decrease my autoimmune flares and my systems is changing my diet. So a big thing that we often forget about is there's usually a bad habit tied to why we're not succeeding at a good habit. So for example, um, my goal in the good habit is to be having a healthy diet. A bad habit of mine is emotional eating. So I encourage you get out a pen and paper because this is gonna be important. And I want you to think about that goal that you set. So for mine, healthy eating. Think about the thing that keeps you in that way, keeps you from achieving that goal. So like I said, emotional eating. My biggest thing that I gravitate towards is flaming hot Cheetos and spicy fried chicken. So first thing I want you to think about is the age you were introduced to that habit or that means. So I can remember being about five years old when I was introduced to Flaming Hot Cheetos. It was a wonderful day. Um, and think about where you were. I remember I was in a gas station with my mom and my half brother. Now identify what were some of the sensory cues going on around you. I heard a lot of people walking. It was a lot of uh, foot traffic, loud music. Um, I could smell the coffee in the background. Uh, what were the emotions you were feeling? I remember feeling a lot of anxiety. It made sense with the season of life that I was in at that time. There's a lot of trauma going on. So anxiety, fear, uh, nausea, that was a sensation I was experiencing because I was developing a rare disease at that time. So sensations were nausea, tightness in my chest. And I'm think and also identify what was the longing? What was the need at that point? And I'd say for me at that point, it was comfort. It was stability. It was connection. So sometimes when you're introduced to a bad habit that keeps you in the way of a good habit, it's not always introduced at a stressful time. So it's important to think about what was going on prior to getting that new habit, but also what were the feelings, the sensations, the beliefs, the needs that it met after getting that new habit? So the first time you looked at porn, the first time you had your first glass of alcohol, the first, first time you smoked a cigarette, what, were you, what was all the emotions, sensations, core needs and beliefs that got encoded after that first time using? So that's step one which can be difficult to kind of dive into. Step two is I want you to think about what does your current self look like whenever you are gravitating towards that habit. So for me, I know I'm usually gravitating towards junk food when I haven't gotten enough sleep. I'm feeling stressed at work. I've overloaded my plate and have not set good boundaries with myself. 
Uh, the narrative I'm telling myself is, what's the point? Who cares? I'm lazy. I'll never get better at this. Um, emotions, anxiety, disgust, dread, sensations, usually some anxiety and tightness in my chest. And I have this visual of me usually driving, going get junk food, which correlates with my initial time being introduced to Flaming Hot Cheetos. It was a gas station that was eating it in the car the first time. So now I want you to think about a future template self. This is the person that you wanna be. This goes into the identity piece. That person that you envision being once you meet this goal, met this goal, or are achieving these healthy habits. So my visual, I see myself calm, cool, balanced. I am having a phenomenal morning routine with eating nourishing food, going for a walk, spending time journaling and praying. Um, I see myself when stress being able to meet those needs in that moment by using deep breaths, calling on a friend, um, where you even see yourself when you have the craving for that bad habit going towards a healthier, a healthier coping mechanism. And then think about that core identity. What is the belief that you're wanting to hold about yourself in that moment? So for me, it would be, I'm safe and I can meet my own needs. Cause that was a core fear growing up. My needs will not be met. I can comfort myself. I have everything I need to comfort myself. And then finally, think about that younger age that experienced that trauma, whether it was the time I was not doing well at five years old, gravitating towards the, the Flaming Hot Cheetos. And I want you to envision being your own parent to that younger self, that inner child. So what, what did my little self need in that moment? In that moment, did I really need Flaming Hot Cheetos? No. Did it actually give me long lasting, um, satisfying meetings of my needs? No, right? It was temporary. In that moment, I needed my mom to just hold me and to say it's gonna be okay. Rub my back, listen to me. So think about and identify the core need that you are wanting these habits to achieve. Because ironically, you aren't actually craving the bad habit now. You're craving what that habit gave you. You don't crave cigarettes. You crave, you crave that, that comfort, that peace, that, oh, I feel relief after smoking the cigarette. So think about what the core need you're needing identify that core narrative and identity that you want to have. And that, I tell y'all, is probably the biggest piece in being able to achieve goals. So stay tuned, y'all. We got a couple more things coming our way. It's going to be a little less heavy, but this is a big important one. And naturally, y'all are talking to a counselor. So what were you going to expect? Y'all have a good one.